Hi there, my name is Agustin Caruso and welcome to Last Station. So in this episode, I'm going to talk about the web design process and how you can create an awesome web design project following this. So the web design process is a framework that you can use so you and your client can be on the same page and both of you know where, what the next step is going to be, right? Because nobody wants to spend hours and hours coding and developing and then suddenly your client comes and says, actually, I just want to change that and that thing was supposed to be addressed in the design phase, right? So the more time you spend on each one of these stages, the faster the product is going to go and the happier your customer is going to be. All right, so let's get started. All right, so the 10 step web design process. Step one, setting goals. So this is the, the, the step where you're going to go sit down or maybe do a Zoom call with your customer and you're going to start brainstorming, right? You're going to start like asking questions on why do you need a new website or why do you need to redesign your old website, right? And why should visitors care, right? What's the kind of information they're going to uh, get through this website? And like, are they trying to understand more about your company? Do they want to buy a certain product? What is going to be the end goal, right? So what is currently working or not? If, you're, if, they, if your customer already has a website and they're trying to do a redesign, or maybe they have a, a, a Facebook page and people are complaining that they do not have a website. So you need to understand what, what's currently working so you can grab what's working and actually add it to your web design process. Or if something that's not working, you can just remove it altogether. Maybe sometimes it's just lack of clear communication on the on, on the writing and on the, the brand itself right and then you it's very important for both of you to define what success looks like right so what are you trying to achieve through this website it could be more visitors it could be more revenue it could be a, a better speed or and better optimization for visitors but you need to get closer clear on what your objective is going to be, what are your goals, and also what success looks like. So when you look behind, you're going to see, actually, this is what happened, right? So your website is it's X amount of faster, and you actually achieved your goal because you have way more visitors than you had before. So it's not going to be only, okay, it's a beautiful website, that's it, and then you're, uh, you deliver it and you disappear, right? Both you and your client must understand what the goals are in the beginning of the project so both of you can be happy at the end of it. S step two, project scope and contract. So this is where you're going to start defining what it is that you're going to do and what, is, and what it is that you're not going to do. And this is, it's actually silly to, to, to talk about this, but uh, every single web designer that has worked with a client, they know that project creep actually happens. And that's when your project starts growing and growing and growing because they see you as this experienced professional. It's like, oh, all right, so maybe we can do uh, Facebook ads and maybe you can do copywriting. Oh, maybe just add uh, one more page. And that one more page is going to like add you five or 10 hours more to the project. So you need to define and write down what you, what what your services are going to be, and you're gonna do that on a contract or something that resembles a contract, right? Something like a sketch. And but you need to be very clear on what it is that you're going to do. You need, also need to be clear on what the payment terms are going to be. You also need to be clear on uh, yeah on deadlines, right? So when are they going to pay you? When are you going to deliver your work? And also, you need to ask for permission to use the work for your portfolio, right? So you don't want to be in that situation when you created an awesome website. Uh, maybe you even charge a little bit cheaper because you knew you needed to grow your portfolio. And at the end of the day, they don't want you using it, right? So that sucks. So please uh, pay attention to this step as well. All right. Step number three, sitemaps and wireframes. So this is when you start asking yourself, like, how is the information going to flow? Right. So we have two uh, kinds of, of, of deliverables here. The first one is a sitemap, which is a blueprint for the entire website. So how, how we're going to go from home to products, to contacts, to FIQ. And then we have a wireframe, which is a blueprint for a single page. Right. So where, where is my header going to be? How are the, the paragraphs going to be structured, sections, footers and things like that. Right. So in this case, 
and and the, yeah the, the thing is that you you need to feel free to mix and match you can create a high fidelity wa uh, wireframe you can create a, a clickable prototype so in this case what i am showing you here it's um it's actually a wireframe that i created for a project of mine where i actually took the liberty to add a little bit more of design right so this is not only for the flow of information but i already used the content and some uh, rizzle rizzle dazzle <laughs> because that's how i like to work so you 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 need to understand the step three but you you uh, you feel free to modify it as you desire all right step number four content and seo so content gives meaning to visitors and also to web crawlers for seo right so you need to start uh, thinking about what kinds of headers what kind of keywords but you cannot fill it only for seo and you cannot use it only for for uh, user content it has to be a middle ground and a, a, a very, very important question that you need to ask yourself is like, who's going to create the content? Obviously, it depends from project to project, but let's uh, most of the time, it's either going to be your client has a team of writers or they're going to hire someone. Option two, your client actually is going to write the content. And in this case, if they are not a copywriter or they're just trying their best, you can actually help them with uh, editing or just guiding them. Oh, you know, you know what? This kind of content works best for this kind of websites. So you're going to be more of a, a consultant. Then number three, you, but this is very important, while charging for it. Right, we don't want to be in the position where we are also doing a copywriter's work without being paid for it. So you need to be clear that either you do this as a separate service, right? So you're specialized, or you're going to outsource it, right? So it's like, yeah. So you don't have the content, I can write it for you, but I'm gonna need to hire someone, and uh, so you need you need to allocate a part of the budget for that. All right. Now, if you are thinking that this uh, video is awesome and is helping you somehow, please leave a like and subscribe because it helps me a lot and it's going to help me to bring more awesome content in the future. All right. So step number five, mood boards. Uh, I really like this step because it's a visual description of the brand's essence. So some things that you just cannot talk about them, but it's easier to show them. You can also use this for, as an inspiration for design. And this is a mood board that I did for when I was designing that last client's uh, project. And in this case, I was looking more for what kind of sections uh, people in, the, in this industry are using. What, how's the information flowing? What colors are they using, right? So uh, me and he, he didn't have a brand ready. So uh, I was actually trying to help him with colors and typography. So we created this to, to have this, this general idea of the brand. And it can be used either before the design stage or before creating the wireframe. All right, from then, once we have the mood board, we can actually go to the visual design and actually take what we already created and start uh, putting it more, uh, making it more, uh, <laughs> giving it a higher fidelity. That's how you say it, right? So we put everything together. So the headers, the images, the text, the menus. So in this case, I am using uh, Figma for this which is a free software and awesome. You can uh, download it or you can uh, use it on the browser. So some people create the design already in a website builder, such as Webflow, right? Me personally, I, I like to do it uh, by hand or by software first before actually coding it because I think it has more flexibility to change things in my personal opinion. Yeah, so just as I mentioned, I use Figma to do this. And yeah, it also gives a chance for revisions to your to the client. So it's like if your client doesn't like, let's say the the the, the colors or some sort of text or the images, you can very very fast implement it and change it. So yeah, that's what visual design. Is. It's a very important step. Uh, step number seven: development. Right. This is a fun part as well. It's time to code. Uh, so the better you do the design process beforehand, the easier and faster this step is going to be, right? Because you don't have to, fi to figure things out. You don't have to create things from scratch because everything is already laid down for you. The content, the structure, and the, the branding, the colors, everything. So you just have to, to, to code it. In my experience, this is a very, very fast process. And yeah, so things that I have used in the past and that my peers are using is WordPress, Webflow, Wix, and Drupal. Uh, personally, uh, I use Webflow and it's the, the GIF that's on your screen right now. 
And if you're interested in knowing more about Webflow, I have a ton of tutorials on my on my channel. And also, if you like to create a free account, there's a link down in my description for you to do so. All right, step number eight is testing and revisions. This is also very important because this is a review process where before you actually deliver it, you need to make sure that everything is running smoothly. So a good idea that, 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 that I've heard that I've implemented is that getting someone to look at the website and so they're gonna be able to find inconsistencies and sometimes badly written content. And the thing is, when you work so much time inside a project, you start to get blind to the, your own mistakes. So that's why bringing someone from the outside is gonna, could help you in this uh, situation. You need also to check links, your browser and device compatibility, load speed, menus, contact forms and payment forms. So basically you need to make sure that everything is smooth and working, right? Like nothing's worth than delivering a website and your link is not working. <laughs> All right, and a good tool for checking links is the W3C Markup Validation Service. Uh, feel free to Google that. All right, it's time to launch. Step number nine. And there's something very important that comes from the world of marketing that can be applied here, which is a beta, a beta launch, right? So you can launch for a, a small amount of people. So you, let's say you reach out to your list and followers and you say just um, a small amount of them, you're gonna be able to access this. So you can gather feedback, analyze data, and they're gonna feel more important and you're gonna be able to see if the website breaks uh, before you do like the mega, mega launch, which is for everyone to see. All right, number 10, updates and recurring services. This is also a very important thing for uh, web designers nowadays because you're gonna be, you're gonna start helping to maintain the website. It's not a, a, a done thing, right? Like it's like you do it and you forget about it. And you can start uh, offering services just such as SEO and writing services, and you can charge monthly for that. You can offer maintenance plus security services. So you, you, you go to your customer and you say, I'm gonna make sure that your website is always updated. It has all the plugins updated and that nobody's gonna hack your website. It's gonna be always ultra fast. I'm gonna keep, so it's, it's I'm gonna, you, you're actually charging them for ease of mind, right? You can also offer marketing services and say Facebook ads or maybe some uh, Google ads. So, so be creative, right? Like the, the sky is the limit. And, or you can charge a monthly fee for small changes on demands on demand. So basically you say, all right, so I know that you want to implement, we, we, we've been talking about implementing new pages and, and small changes, and I'm gonna make sure that I'm available to do them for an X amount uh, per month. And I'm gonna be able to do, uh, let's say a one page change for a month or something like that, it's up to you. But this is just to give you an idea that you can start implementing recurring services after you finish the project, pro your project. And this is awesome for, for monthly income for us web designers. All right, and that's it. Thank you for staying until the end. And if you enjoyed this video, please subscribe. It helps me a lot to bring you more awesome content so you can become an awesome web designer. So guys, I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.